once you're at the default screen, you can access the different menus by simply pushing the menu button. Pushing this once will get you to the quick start menu, which is helpful for setting up the, uh, the unit when you first purchase it and commission it. You keep pushing it, it takes you to the other menus that, and parameter list that you'll probably have to uh, enter and do some programming. But as you can see, by simply pushing the menu button, it just goes around and comes back to the default screen. If you keep pushing it, it just goes around in a loop. So as you can see, you got one, two, three, four, five, six. You have six different parameter lists to go down into before you come back to the default screen. So if I do want to go to a different menu, the first one you come to is the quick start. The quick start menu is the first one you want to come to to set the unit up after you uh, power it up to get ready to commission. So once in here, the very important parameters for the start curve and proper functionality are in this group. So you can either hit the down arrow or up arrow again if you, if you keep pushing one arrow, it's going to go around in a loop. You can't get lost. So I'm going to hit the down arrow, or up, actually let's try the up arrow. The first thing I come to is motor FLA. This is the information you would pull right off of the motor nameplate that this starter is connected to, and this is where you would program it. Right now, for example, we have two amps programmed into it. Let's just say we want to, the, the actual motor current is 5 amps. To change that, you simply push the enter button, you put the up arrow to 5, and hit the enter button, and it's locked in there. I'm going to change it back to 2, because that's what our test motor is, and another demonstration, you hit enter, you push the down arrow to 2, because that's what our nameplate is, enter, and it locks it in. The next one up is service factor, again, you enter everything in here you want that matches your nameplate. Here is uh, a running overload. You can program that to whatever class overload you want. The uh, local source tells you where you're going to start and stop this uh, product. And right now we have it set for keypad because I want to use the start stop buttons right here on the keypad. However, if I wanted uh, external input to start it, I would simply change this to terminal because that's where it's looking for its start signal. I would then enter. Now it won't start or stop with my start stop buttons because it's looking for the start signal somewhere else. So I'm going to put him back to keypad, enter, and now it will start from here and stop. So that's what that does. But as you can see there's settings in the quick start menu, the uh, starting curves, so the, the very basic, the very important um, parameters are inside the quick start menu. However, a lot of these are duplicated as you go to the other parameter lists. For example, I.O., you go in here, this is where you'd want to set up the, your inputs and outputs for what you want it to do, fault, start, stop, however you want to set, set it up, and it's, this would be in the I.O. group. And again, keep pushing the up arrow, it will eventually come around to the beginning. It just goes in a loop. There's the function group. Now this here, it's not actually a parameter, this is my fault. This records the last five faults, so I can go down and look at my faults. This is important for troubleshooting. If we need to talk to you, we may ask you to go into the fault menu and tell us what the last fault was, and that would be fault number one. The fault number one is the latest fault. Push the menu button, it brings you back to the, uh, the basic default menu.